Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to do just a general catch up. I haven't filmed a video in like two or three weeks at this point and I feel like a lot of things are going on in the world, dealing with a lot of stuff personally and work life. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that stuff but I also wanted to just show you um, all of the books that I currently have out from the library and give you an update of like where I'm at with the 30 or so books that I have out from the library and also to talk a little bit about some house things that we've been doing. I showed you in a couple of vlogs ago some updates we did like new furniture we bought and now um, I've bought in a little bit more decor stuff so maybe I'll show you a few clips of that and like what I'm envisioning having less bare walls which is a goal of mine this year. Let's talk first about the books that I currently have out from the library and like why I have them out. Let's first go with um, Middle Grade March. So you've seen my TBR for Middle Grade March. I've now read three of the books. So Small Spaces Nevermore number one and All's Fair Middle School. And I am, um, I want to say halfway through both of these ones, The Brave, which is the group read and Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. I am really enjoying both of them. I think I'm loving Walk Two Moons more. I also didn't know this was a featuring a Native American main character and it's the same for The Brave so it's interesting that I'm pairing these two together at the moment and then one book that I still have to read is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon so that's it for my middle grade March books I wanted to show you the other ones that I had on my TBR which were for the booktube prize and these I still have checked out from the library but you've seen some of these so let's see the ones that I finished for the book two prize are all of these Ooh. so these are going back to the library very soon they are oh man if I can hold them up they're so heavy uh, Meltdown, Feud, uh, Fevers, Feuds and Diamonds, The Man in the Red Coat, Black Wave and Fathoms and then the last one that I have to read which I'm going to finish today and tomorrow is Vesper Flight by Helen McDonald this is one of the shortest ones of the pile which is good and I'm listening to this one on audiobook as well. So that's it for the book two prize. I decided I did not want to participate in the next round. I think this was a great experience where I got to see what it was like because I had seen many people do it in years past um, and I felt kind of like out of the loop I guess but now that I've done it for a round I feel like I understand what it is like. There are some things that I liked about the experience and then some things that I didn't quite like about the experience. Um, I do feel like I got out of my comfort zone and I read things that I wouldn't have previously read and I did learn new things. At the same time, I also feel like the booktube prize really slowed down my reading the past couple months. It was always like this thing in the back of my head telling me that I needed to read these books to rank them. Um, and then also this other part of my head that was like, I want to read these books that are not these book booktube prize books. Nonfiction is such a diverse thing to read from that Generally, it felt like the books that were in my round, um, while interesting, were not the kinds of books that I would ever pick up on my own, and I think that is also something that slowed me down because I know I can read a nonfiction book in like two, three days uh, if I'm passionate about the subject and, you know, I enjoy what I am learning about. And for these, it's not that I didn't enjoy what I was learning about, I just wasn't as interested in the subjects. Um, so it took me longer. Some of these books took me weeks to read. Some I started at the beginning of last month and I didn't finish until this month and I think that has slowed down my nonfiction reading and made me not really have as much fun in the past couple months reading wise. So now let's talk about the rest of the books that I have out. Some I've had out for many many months at this point um, and some of them are newer so I wanted to just show you all of them. I have had out Daddy for a long time and I was supposed to finish reading it this month so that I could have read two books for my goal of reading more short stories and I think I'll just film my first quarter goals checkup later on in the month of April and try to read this towards the beginning of April because like I said I was just so bogged down by all of this nonfiction and then like trying to balance middle grade March as well that I just didn't feel like I gave a good shot to some of my goals in March particularly felt like I did a better job at my first quarter goals in February um, same for um, Ruth Ware, which was another goal for my first quarter goals of reading more mysteries to find out what more mystery kind of reading experience I'm looking for. So I haven't read this one either. It's still here. I think that's it for my first quarter goals books that I have had out. And then the other ones that I have, um, these two I've had out for a long time. Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which I've seen so many people rave about this and I just really need to sit down and read it. I haven't made a, enough time for it, I feel like. And also The Lager Queen of Minnesota. 
which I haven't made time for. I still have out and have had out for a really long time these truths by Jill Lepore after I saw who, who was it? Jessica reads things? Jessica? Jessica here on booktube talked about this book and raved about it and again one of those things where I need to set time for because it is really really long and I want to listen to the audiobook as I read it so I'm keeping it for a little longer I think and we'll see. In the same vein books I've had out for a long time The Airbo of the Future 2 still here with me. The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh which I've shown before. I think that's it for things that you've probably seen before and then here are some things that you probably haven't seen before. I have Turning 15 on the Road to Freedom, my story of the 1965 Summer Voting Rights March. I found this while I was filling a materials request for a teacher. I had never seen this book before and it's really really nice inside. It has a lot of pictures. Um, I thought it'd be a good book for me. Like it seemed like something I would enjoy. So I picked it up. I still have it. I haven't read it quite yet. Let's do the rest of the nonfiction. So I also have All the Young Men by Ruth Coker Burks. This one is about the HIV crisis, AIDS crisis I want to say. I believe the author is following, is connected in some way, like knows someone. Um, and then learns more about different people's stories with the AIDS crisis. In the same vein, I want to read Last Call by Elon Green and I have that one on audiobook from Libra FM. Both of them are nonfiction books obviously and they have to do with um, LGBTQ issues. That's it for the nonfiction I think. Now I can show you the graphic novels. You've seen my interest in Derf back Derf lately so here's the last book of his that's like a full book. Trashed I've read now um, his book about Jeffrey Dahmer and also his book about Kent State. <laughs> I couldn't remember there for a second. So this is the last one that I have to read. I also have a true crime graphic nonfiction because it's a real story um, and this is what it looks like on the inside. It's purely black and white. I saw it because I think I was rating other things and this one was recommended on the site on Goodreads. I was like, oh that looks interesting. So I picked it up and then I have a book I'm excited about. I didn't know Kat Lay was coming out with a new book. Um, she wrote Snapdragon, which I loved last year, and this is called Thirsty Mermaids. It's actually an adult graphic novel, so it's not a kid's one or a young adult one. Um, and this is what it looks like on the inside, and it is exciting to think that she has more books out because I really, really love her style, and I loved her storytelling in Snapdragon, so I'm hoping that it's also great in this one. Um, so yay! Thirsty Mermaids. I accidentally got two copies of this book. I put it on hold and I don't know, I think that the library, the borrowing library, just sent me two copies. They're both from the same library district. But anyway, it's A Map to the Sun by Sloan Leong and it has to do with um, girls in a basketball team at a school and there's not really enough money for there to be a girls team and it's also about these girls backgrounds and their families the colors as you can see are very vibrant yeah it's really heavy i heavier than i expected there is some um i like stopped reading because there was some self-harm that was being shown on the page and i was just like oh i can't handle this at this moment so i set it down i do need to go back to it it is a denser one i would say there's a lot of things moving parts going on so you really have to pay attention to the pictures and then I also have Katie the Cat Sitter which should be a lot more fun this is by Colleen A.F. Benable or Benable she is the one that does the what's that hamster graphic novel for kids um a guinea pig pet shop private eye <laughs> um which I always recommend and she's also done kiss number eight which I've checked out before but I never read and I really like how it looks on the inside it looks so cute and I feel like this is gonna be a great Raina Telgemeier, Victoria Jameson read alike. So we shall see what I think about this one. I also have out another one that I'm hoping and thinking is gonna be a Raina Telgemeier read alike. It's Allergic by Megan Wagner Lloyd and Michelle Mee Nutter. Same thing on the inside, it's very realistic fiction, real life girl story, um, which I think is gonna be a good read alike for kids who like that kind of stuff. One is about cats and one is about dogs which is fun so I'm excited to get to both of these. The last kids book that I have is The One Thing You'd Save by Linda Sue Park. Basically Linda Sue Park asked real kids what they would save in a fire if like all of their family was safe etc. Like what material thing would you save? I think she fictionalizes their um, responses. Um, she writes like poetry I would say is how I'd describe it and um, there's also illustrations of it and it's supposed to be kind of 
tear jerky, I guess. Someone at work read it and, you know, she said that there were parts that were really sad. And then the last book that I have is a young adult one and it's a follow-up to a series that I read the first book last year or the year before. <clears throat> I think it was last year. The first book was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So this is Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. So it's book number two. And I also have this one out from Libra Femme. So I'm really excited to get to this one. I think that's all the books. So there's a lot of books that I have checked out as you can see. Just not a good reading month this whole month. February wasn't great either, but I feel like March was worse. So hopefully I pick it back up. So now let's talk about all the other random things that are happening. Probably the most exciting thing <laughs> to tell you is that I did get my first vaccine and I did it this past week on, oh, it was Tuesday, I think. So now it's been a few days and my arm isn't sore anymore. It was really, really sore for like a couple days. Now I'm just waiting until the second week of April to get my second dose, which is really, really exciting. I'm super excited that this is an opportunity for me. <laughs> it was kind of like a everyone off to your races to get an appointment thing and like everyone is on their own trying to find an appointment in this wild wild west of COVID-19 vaccines so I'm really happy that I was able to get a vaccine I'm hoping that the rest of my state joins in all of that and the rest of my country joins in all of that so that we could go back to normal any semblance of normal in the next few months and then definitely by the end of the year that is like my dream to have my wedding actually happen not that i'm like not already married but like to have a party and to have people together that's my dream and that's in december so we can get there right like it's barely april so i think we can get there by december the other exciting things are like the things that i'm buying to decorate the house and make it a little bit more homey because we've been here so much the past year i will show you some of that now I got rid of my old ugly digital clock that I've literally had since the ninth grade. Oh my god, it's like almost 15 years ago. We got this piece. It took forever to come here. It came from like Eastern Europe. New bookshelf kind of looks like it's a little bit more organized and um, I got a frame for this thing. I'm really liking this wine bottle holder. This is not really decor stuff but I am really proud of my plants and I have the orchid actually blooming and this thing is also blooming and I've had forever and I never thought they'd bloom. So this coffee bean grinder has changed my life. I'm really happy with this like beehive hexagon thing. At first we were gonna put one here and one there and I did not like it. I wanted both of them to be together because it seemed really small next to the mirror for it to just be one and one. So now they're together. We got this tapestry that we have to hang this weekend. In this box we have two new big planters to put on our front and we're gonna plant this little guy oh these are two things that i also got that i need to put up and then last but not least i just wanted to talk about general work and life stuff work has been really tumultuous the past like six months and not necessarily because of covid but because my library decided to reorganize the entire structure while COVID was happening, so it was like this whole situation where we had to reapply for our jobs, which was really devastating. It all landed okay for me, it didn't land okay for everyone in my system, and that is really upsetting. Um, and even now, like it's been two or three months since that change has like been in place and things are still changing and like in flux you know people are moving around people are getting other jobs people are coming in and there's just a lot of new faces too it's just weird because when i first came into this system it was a very stable and <laughs> very old like all the librarians were had been there for many 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 decades you know like 10 20 years and i i feel like now i'm one of the most senior people and it's strange because I've only been there for like three and a half years. So it's just weird to me. And I think just also understanding like new dynamics with all of these new people. Like it used to be one way, but now with all of these new people, we have to relearn how we work together. I'm hoping that it gets better because it's not great having Zoom meetings all the time. I don't know, I feel like how can you get to know someone via video it just it's awkward and it's not where i excel i definitely excel in more like small group settings than i do in like a ginormous zoom meeting that's work stuff just generally the morale is not great it's getting slightly better i think 
like I see the end near. I think most of that is from the vaccines and like knowing that we're all gonna get vaccinated soon. That I think that's what's causing me to have um, more hope for like outdoor story time and then eventually coming back to indoor story time and like full programming, large scale programming. I've still been doing my book club but that's only with 10 or less kids. Hopefully, like I said, the rest of my community joins in and also gets vaccinated so we can go back to having all of these in-person programs. Not directly related to me but um, in the family we have had a mental illness diagnosis and we're currently dealing with that. Yeah, it's something that I've never personally dealt with before. This is like the first time where I'm like reading books to learn more about a certain illness or disorder um, to like know how to talk to people about it and how to um, offer my support in the best way that I can and I think it's like understanding that it's so common and because I've been like this sheltered person that has never had to deal with something like that um, finally dealing with it has been a learning experience for me on top of all of that it's like trying to understand how to support our communities dealing with gun violence and racism and all kinds of those things so it's like it's, it's hard being a person sometimes you know but those are all of the the random thoughts that I've been dealing with, conversations I've been having with myself in my head that have sometimes taken precedence over reading in the past month and it's totally fine not to read. Yeah, hopefully I can get back to my reading in the next month. So let's hope April is a better month. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of these books or would like to read any of them, if any of them sound interesting, let me know down below. I'll come back definitely with like a more clear April TBR um, very soon and a March wrap up of like four bucks but that, that is what it is. I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.